Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me, Vicar Zach, this Thanksgiving week. Happy Thanksgiving! Um, I hope it is a time of a rest, a time to watch some football, a time to talk with family over the phone, or maybe a few others in person. I also hope it's a time that you eat lots of really good food. Now I have to ask, what what are your favorite what are your favorite things at Thanksgiving? Do we have pies? Do we like turkey? What are our favorite sides? What what are we feeling? I know for me, I like myself a little bit of turkey, but I'm more of a ham guy. But I always look forward more to to the sides that we have. You know, the stuffing, the corn pudding, the green bean casserole, the sweet potatoes with the marshmallows on top. And then of course the desserts, so I mean like you need like 20 different types of pie, right? You need like blueberry, cherry, apple, pumpkin, pecan. And then you can also have, you know, all the other raspberry, blackberry, chocolate, all the fruit pies that you can think of. I mean, I'm a little biased, I love pies. Um, but I also hope that you can get a good scoop of ice cream too to put with your dessert. And I hope that whatever the day looks like for you, that it brings you joy. And it just, again, I, I hope it's a time to just take a breath and relax. Um, after all the schoolwork that you've been doing, after all the work that's been going on, that you can just spend this time uh, giving thanks to God for, for the blessings you have in your life. Obviously, with Thanksgiving, it's very easy uh, to talk about what we should talk about this week, right? Which is thanks. So I want to ask you, what, what are you thankful for? You can pause it right now if you want and uh, talk to each other. Tell somebody in your house what you're thankful for. Um, because it's so important for us always to keep eyes open for the blessings in our lives because that means our eyes of faith will always give thanks to God. I know for me, I'm thankful for uh, for this church, for Bethel, for allowing me the opportunity to learn here, to grow here, and to serve alongside of you all. Um, it's been an amazing couple months so far, and I look forward to what the future holds uh, with our partnership together in the gospel. I also give thanks to my beautiful wife, Amy, uh, who uh, married me <laughs> in 2020. Um, I give thanks to God for her um, and all the new things that we've been able to do, you know, get a, get a house or get an apartment, turn it into a home, uh, to be able to take little mini uh, staycations even to just learn how to be together in this really crazy time. I also give thanks to God for technology that we are able to still communicate, even if it's over a screen. I know that I uh, communicate with my friends over FaceTime, over text message. We use Zoom. Uh, it's because we can't necessarily always be in person with each other. It's nice that we have these opportunities to see one another, although not physically there uh, in the room with you uh, spiritually and emotionally there, uh, even over a screen. So again, there are things to be thankful for in the midst of 2020. I know it has been a crazy year. There's been lots of loss, bad things have happened. Um, it's been a very trying and difficult year, and I'm sure you have plenty of those. And I think that's important to share too with other people, a couple of uh, difficulties that you've had. Um, because when we name our difficulties and we uh, lament, so when we our sorrow uh, grows for those things, that is also a prayer to God. Um, again, when we see every aspect of our life as God-given, um, we are rooted in, in thankfulness for God, and we are grounded in God's love. I talked a few weeks ago about 1 Thessalonians, which was this letter that um, Paul wrote to this church uh, after Jesus died, talking to them and talking to them about comfort 
and how to comfort them with the words that God's reign is forever, that Jesus has died for us. Um, and there's a little part in 1 Thessalonians right at the end that I think is really important. Paul writes, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Paul says, give thanks in all circumstances. Now, it's important here to note that we don't give thanks for all circumstances. We don't have to give thanks for coronavirus. We don't have to give thanks for not being able to go to school. There are things we don't have to necessarily be thankful for. However, we do give thanks in all circumstances because God is present with us no matter what. In the blessings of our lives, when we have food on our table, when all the good things that do happen, but we also know that God is with us in the difficult times, when we are struggling, when we've gotten bad news, when we've gotten a bad grade on a test, when we didn't meet a certain deadline, when we made our siblings or when we made our parents upset, that no matter what, God is with us. And when either in the good or the bad, in the changes and the challenges of life, God will never leave us alone. And that is the will of Christ Jesus that Christ will always be with us because the cross tells us so. The cross is the biggest sign of God's love for us. And God said, I love you. You are my child with whom I am well pleased. Those are the words we hear when we look at the cross. Those are the words we hear when we give thanks to God. And we give thanks to God for the hope we have in Jesus. The hope that we'll be talking about in Advent, starting this Sunday. So I hope you'll come out to service on Sunday at 1030. We have hope in the Emmanuel, the Christ child, God with us. We have peace and we have joy and we have love too. We have all these things rooted in God's love for us, for which we give thanks. And I, again, like I said earlier, we give thanks for the gift of this beautiful church, but for the people who embody the church, we give thanks. For all the differing opinions, for the differing ages, for everything that makes us the body of Christ, because God says that we are all important in God's plan, that God has given us Jesus so that we might live, so that we might seek to do God's will in this world and to bring the kingdom of heaven a little bit closer through works of love for our neighbor where we can see the needs of the people around us. So friends, we give thanks this day and always for God. And I give you thanks. I thank God for you every day because if it weren't for you i wouldn't get to do this and i am so grateful that you've given me the opportunity that you join me every week on thursdays or wednesdays or whenever the video comes out so that we can pray so that we can sing and so that we can just enjoy each other's company <clears throat> so i i do i do have a song for us to sing it comes from our worship and praise songbook. We don't have these in the pews, but it's called Give Thanks, um, which is a really fitting prayer and a really fitting song for us to, to sing together. It goes, Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ, his Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given 
Jesus Christ, his Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich, because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. Friends, let us give thanks. Let us take time each and every day to give thanks. So let us pray. And it's going to be real simple today, and you can join me. Dear God, thank you. Thank you for everything. Amen. Friends, happy Thanksgiving. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.